And so now we're going to assume that our vector u of x, u of y is approximately equal to u x j n j u y j n j so we might write this as a matrix in times the unknown the unknown displacements. I should write that this is, you know, the approximate approximation. And this n is going to look like this. So this is, these are the shape functions in the x and y direction. And it's almost unheard of to use different shape functions in the x and y direction, but technically you could. Um, you'd have really odd elements if you did that. Uh, but, but technically, you, there's nothing that would stop you from doing it. So typically, th these ends are going to be the exact same because the shape because the shape functions. You know, you're going to assume the same interpolant in the x and y direction. And you know, I think I want to. Apologize. I want to use a different symbol here. I, I want to use we'll use d for displacements, just so that we understand that these are the discrete nodal displacements, and that vector looks like this. U of x for the first node, u y for the first node, u x for the second node, u y for the second node and so on to ux for the nth node, uy for the ith node. So then our del u is going to be n, this n. And so if you go back to our strain, our strain displacement matrix, or we had this E, D, U bar, right? Now, now we're plugging in this approximation for U. So now we're going to have D in D. And what we call this guy is B. And it is called the strain dis strain displacement matrix. So it's just D, remember, is a differential operator matrix. And you multiply it by n, and so basically you're just taking the derivatives of the shape function, right? Which is not different than what we did in one one dimension or in in 2D with uh,
So I, I promise I'll work an example in a minute, and then it'll sort of all come together, I think. All right, so I think I'm just going to skip to the end. If we plug those approximations into our equation, what we get is So that is our finite element formulation. What do you suppose this thing is called? So it's something that multiplies a vector of unknown displacements. There you go. Stiffness matrix, right? What do you think this thing is called? It's Remember, this is, this is nothing more than a long equation that says F equals MA, right? So D double, the unknown displacements two time derivatives is A, right? It's the acceleration. So what do you think this thing is called? Something that multiplies the ex unknown accelerations. Mass. So it's a mass matrix. And then using the notation that we previously used, we'd have F and Q. And so written down, we have K E D plus M D double dot minus F minus Q. Right. And a lot of times we're just interested in statics or quasi-statics, right? So we don't necessarily care about uh, wave propagation or we're only interested in the kind of slow loading conditions. And in that case, we assume that the accelerations are, the inertia is zero. So in that scenario, we basically have Ke D equals to F, where this is F, right? And so this is the same equation, right, that we've been solving in 1D and 2D. For scalar fields, it, you know, in the end, it's just a linear algebra problem, right? Now, if you want to solve dynamics, that's a different class. We're not going to cover that here. You can also use this formulation to solve for uh, the eigenvalues. So, or set up an eigenvalue problem. Just, just this is just a complete aside. You, you don't even have to take notes. But um, if this is a mechanical system, like a structure, right? Then the eigenvalues are. this thing, the 
the, the solution to this thing. Right? And what those give you, what, this, what the lambdas that you'd solve for in this give you the fundamental frequencies uh, that the structure will vibrate at. And so everybody's seen like the, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, that, that, that old movie from the 20s or 30s or whatever when the bridge is like oscillating cra like crazy and then it tears itself apart. Well, the reason that happened was the wind blew the bridge such that it oscillated the bridge at its fundamental frequency, one of those eigenvalues. And when that happens, you get a resonance in a mechanical structure. So it begins to oscillate violently, right? And that's, that's what happened, that, that tore that apart. So anyway, th the point is you can, you can use this same formulation to so because you know, now over here, this is just a, a standard eigenvalue problem that you could feed to an eigenvalue solver. 